Oh, Bob. I really want to spend the rest of my life with him. But I'm worried about the future. Will our children still have the same amount of security online as we have today? Quantum computers will be a big challenge for cryptographers. Luckily, quantum encryption is on its way. The security measures we use today rely on the fact that it's very difficult for computers to reverse engineer the encryption process. In the case of a 256-bit AES encryption, that means testing 2 to the power of 256 possible keys, a number that is 78 digits long. For RSA encryption, it means finding the prime factors of a very large number. In computer science, we classify a problem's complexity based on how many calculations we must do given the input. A problem is said to be of polynomial time if, for an input size n, the number of calculations is proportional to n to the power of k for a certain k. On the other hand, cracking a 256-bit AES encryption by brute force is of exponential time. That means that the number of calculations increases exponentially, since adding one bit to a key doubles the number of possibilities. Exponential functions grow much, much faster than polynomial functions, especially for large numbers. For this reason, algorithms of polynomial time are considered fast, whereas exponential time is considered, well, slow. The algorithm for finding prime factors is a bit more efficient than exponential time, but still slower than polynomial time. It would take a supercomputer thousands of years to find the prime factors of a 2048-bit key, which is what most websites use today. So the real threat to the security of our current encryption methods is not only more computing power, what would be more worrying is better algorithms. If there were a fast way, say polynomial time, to find the prime factors of a large number, then RSA would be compromised. Luckily, no such algorithm has been found, and it's unlikely that it's even possible. That is, using conventional computers. Quantum computers will be a game changer. What's the difference between a quantum computer and a normal computer? Today's computers perform calculations on bits, a piece of information that is either one or zero. On the most basic level, a computer is a series of transistors that act like switches. Either they're switched on, allowing a current to flow through them, or they're turned off. These two states correspond to the one and zero. Each bit is always in one of those two states. In quantum mechanics, there are a lot more states. We look at a system and describe everything about it that can be measured. In the case of a photon, polarization is one such measure. It is the direction in which light vibrates, horizontal, vertical, or horizontal and vertical. So a photon can be described as being in two states at once. This is what we call quantum superposition. Therefore, in quantum mechanics, a sum of two states can also be a valid solution to an equation. A quantum computer uses this to its advantage. Instead of working on bits, they work on quantum bits, or qubits. Instead of being in either one state or another, one or zero, a qubit can be both one and zero at once. Quantum computers don't just have many times the computing power of conventional computers. They're also based on a completely different mechanism. For quantum computers, there is an algorithm that can find the prime factors of a number in polynomial time, Shor's algorithm. It can do searches much more quickly. Brute forcing a 256-bit key will no longer require testing 2 to the power of 256 possibilities a quantum computer would be able to run through them much faster. Luckily, that won't happen in the near future. Qubits are not at all easy to work with. Just lightly handling them the wrong way messes up their state. This means that quantum computers are still at an early stage of development. But it does mean we need to be prepared. Since 2017, the U.S. National Institute for Standards and Technology, NIST, has been looking for a new encryption standard, just like it did back in 2002, when AES was chosen as the winner of a selection process. One promising encryption method for the post-quantum era is NTRU. It is based on the mathematical concept of a lattice. 
Whatever the new standard, it will ensure that encrypted communications between regular computers won't be in danger from quantum computers. So, I can rest assured that our future children won't have to worry about a thing. Bob and I will live happily ever after.